This is part two of the 16 millimeter transfer system videos. A couple of things. First, I apologize for how long it's been since doing part one, but unfortunately right now, the YouTube projects are not my top priority as I shoot and direct for a living and things got really busy the first part of this year. The second thing is this project has become more complicated as I keep trying to make the absolute best homemade device that I can. Part of this is just simple rigidity, trying to make everything as solid as possible so nothing moves around during the transfer, thereby producing unstable footage. As I went along, you'll see that I continue to upgrade parts and structures to make things better. As I speak, I'm now in the testing phase for the machine, and it's looking pretty good. There's a lot of footage from the build, so to keep the videos a reasonable length, I've decided to make a couple of parts, so this is part two. Keep in mind that 90% or so of the components I'm using are from Amazon or eBay, no plug intended there. So let's get started. This is a piece of 18 by 24 inch, 1 8 inch thick aluminum and this is going to be the base of the transfer system. I'm going to lay out roughly where the components will be. This will give me a good idea of whether everything will fit and the rough sizes for whatever holes I need to cut. I need to cut a square hole down here that the gate mechanism in the previous video will mount to. And I'll mark where the center of the reels go. And that way, when the gate mechanism is dropped down in, the film will be at the same height as the reels. This is an aluminum heat sink that the LED light fixture is going to be mounted to. So the first thing I did was drill the center holes for the film spindles. These spindles came from an ARRI 16 BL magazine. There's a take-up spindle and a supply spindle. I made this little template, which was made from a piece of the 16 BL magazine. I didn't feel so bad about scavenging this magazine because the rubber seals were shot in it anyway. The three holes that mount the spindle will drop into place. I secure it and use a center punch to mark exactly the center of those holes. I had to be careful to keep the original screws that were in the ARRI BL magazines. These screws, unusually for ARRI, seem to be a custom thread. And these fit in amazingly well. I'm going to take those out for the time being so I can cut the hole. The less parts that are exposed to dust and metal chips, the better. So I drilled two holes in the corner of this square and used the jigsaw, which cut quite nicely through the eighth inch aluminum. At the top, and I'm not going to show it, but I scored it with a Dremel and a grinding wheel. And with that score, I can pretty much break this piece out. Now I gotta clean everything up with a file. Try to get these edges as straight as possible. Of course there's better ways of doing this, but I don't really have the automated equipment. So it's back to the good old fashioned ways. Fortunately, aluminum is a very soft metal, so it's pretty easy to file. Everything's nice and straight. I try to keep as much dust cleaned off as possible. Now I try the gate. And there's a little overhang that kind of protrudes out. I'm going to have to notch that out so that when the gate is mounted flush to the metal, it can poke through. First I use a Dremel grinding wheel for the rough cut and then finish it off with a round file. 
Maybe I have nothing automated to see here. And I clean off all the chips and try it for fit. Seems to look pretty good. There's holes in the gate four mounting holes that were used in the actual camera. So I line those up and drill corresponding holes in the aluminum plate. Then fortunately these are standard metric sizes so they just have to be countersunk. And with four screws that holds that gate in pretty well. Very rigid. That's what you want. Now here I'm just going to try it just to make sure everything is the right height. The reels are the right height as the film in the gate. And you see if I spin the gate, it actually pulls the film through. Of course, there's no motors or take up at this point. This is a timing pulley that I attached to the end of the film gate. And I'll use this to activate a momentary contact switch. When this pulley rotates, at a particular point, this pin will strike the momentary contact switch and the camera will be activated to take a photograph of the frame in the gate. This is the tiny drill bit that I'm going to use to drill a hole in the pulley. So after I put that tiny hole in there, I use my favorite fixer upper epoxy and glued the pin into the pulley. We'll let that dry overnight. And maybe I'll clean my fingernails too. So there's the pulley, and I figured out the placement by rotating the gate. And when the pin is in a position to strike this momentary contact switch, the film will be registered in the gate with the registration pin, and it won't be moving. So the picture snapped. Then the next frame is pulled into the gate. Now I gotta mount this bracket in here which is holding this momentary contact switch. It's now mounted, and as you can see, I put a meter on this, and when I rotate the timing pulley, it hits the switch and creates a contact. Yeah, that works. This is a gear I found on eBay, and this gear pitch matches the gears on the back of the spindles. Kind of hard to find but it has a 10 millimeter inner diameter. So I got a 10 millimeter rod and a coupling that has an eight millimeter and a 10 millimeter bore on it so that it fits this motor, which is a NEMA 23 stepper motor. Now this motor, once I put the gear on it, will engage the spindle on the take up side and pull the film through. This bracket is made for the motor and these two L brackets I bought off of Amazon. The stink bug is actually not part of the build. We'll see how this goes together later, but I figured out a way how to mount this so that it would be able to spin the spindle. There's not a lot of clearance in there. This is an adjustable camera bracket that I'm going to mount the camera to. And these are actually adjustable door barricade brackets that I bought on Amazon. And I think these will work pretty well to hold the camera bracket. And I can adjust it up and down and side to side so that I can get the camera in just the right position. This is a 95CRI LED and that's about the best I could find in terms of color purity. I think 100 would be perfect. My plan is to use these two notches on the side and mount it to this aluminum heat sink. The heat sink should draw any heat away from the front of the LED. This is an LED driver that I got to power the LED. It goes from 120 volts or 240, I guess, and it produces somewhere between 21 and 34 volts DC. I think the LED is about 30 volts. Here's where the heat sink should go, so I'll need to figure out exactly where the center of the gate is on the heat sink, and that's where the LED needs to be mounted. I'm marking the two notches 
and I'm going to drill holes and tap them and put little screws in there to hold the LED in place. There, yeah, everything's laid out. This is another one of those very fine drill bits, probably one millimeter. And when you have that center punch mark in there, it's a lot easier to get these small drill bits in there so they don't float around too much. Easy to break, though. My drill press is one of the few machines that I've got that really helps this whole process out. I drilled these extra two holes thinking I was going to run the power wires through, but there wasn't enough clearance and they would have had to have been bent too much, so I ended up not using them anyway. The power wires actually just will come up through the eighth inch aluminum. This is a piece of lighting frost that I'm going to use to diffuse the LED. What I did was cut a notch in the top of the heat sink. The flexible gel can be mounted at the bottom, and then I'm going to make a little bracket that will hold it in at the top. Hopefully, with a small 16 millimeter frame, the diffusion should work pretty well. Here's that gear assembly, and I notched the side of it so that the set screws on the coupling will grab into it. This is one of those things you do when you're building something from scratch. After I had the gate mounted and the spindles mounted, I laid out all the components so that I could see how everything fit and whether anything was going to be in the way of anything else. The big box on the left is actually a 12 volt switching power supply that will have a 110 plug on one end and multiple 12 volt outputs that I can feed the stepper motors. You can see here there's also a small stepper motor that's attached to the pulley which will drive the gate mechanism. The bigger stepper motor on the left will drive the take up spindle. The other boxes are stepper motor drivers and variable speed controls for those stepper motors. I think this will work. I also bought a couple of 7-inch furniture legs to mount the whole mechanism. I originally started with four, but as you'll see, I added at least two more on the inside to give it more stability. Had I had this whole thing to do over again, I might have gone for a quarter-inch piece of aluminum instead of an eighth-inch piece, because I think it would be more rigid. This is a good place to stop, as the next video will detail the installation of most of the components. Keep in mind that this design is kind of fluid. Sometimes things don't quite work as I wanted, and I go back and change things or add different parts. If you're still watching after all this, please subscribe, as it helps out the channel and makes it easier for me to do more videos. Thanks.